good morning to all of you uh, is i am audible is i am audible ನೋಡಿ <laughs> epidemiology of rabies see this is important not only from your examination point of view even from the future practice point of view some of the important things which i am going to discuss under this chapter will help you in your future practice so especially whenever you come across any animal bite this is very essential now let us see what is this rabies see rabies is a fatal disease and it is a zoonotic disease that is caused by the rabies virus and rna virus lisa virus genus and it is type 1 virus the virus is present in saliva of rabid animals and transmitted to humans following bite scratch and lick it clinically represents uh, presents as acute encephalomyelitis and patients usually survive for few days and the disease almost always practically 100% fatal see one of the example for 100% fatal disease is the rabies where the mortality once the patient gets the disease he is bound to die that is 100% mortality but you should also remember it is practically 100% preventable if timely and correct rabies prophylaxis is provided to the patient that's why the post exposure prophylaxis is utmost important in case of prevention of rabies so regarding epidemiology globally about 60000 human rabies deaths are reported annually india alone reports about 20000 that is one third of these deaths annually which works out to be about two deaths per hour the islands of andaman and lakshadweep are historically free from rabies and it is surprised to know that lakshadweep is even free from dogs an estimated 17.4 million animal bites occurs in india which requires the post exposure prophylaxis about 5 million rabies post exposure prophylaxis are administered annually in india now as per as the animal reservoirs and vectors are concerned the animals that transmits rabies to human in india are commonly dogs which constitutes about 97% sometimes cats which constitutes about 2% occasionally 1% by mongoose jackals fox monkey bear and other mammals consequently exposure to these animals <coughs> calls for rabies uh, calls for rabies post exposure prophylaxis the animals that ordinarily not known to transmit rabies in india are bats rabbits squirrel and rodents and that's <laughs> consequently the exposure to these animals ordinarily do not require the post exposure prophylaxis for rabies so that's why whenever the patient comes with the <coughs> bite of bats rabbits squirrels and rodents we don't give any post exposure prophylaxis we will give only 
tetanus toxide. Then what about the modes of transmission? See the modes of transmission mainly bites from infected animals. Next is licks on broken skin or mucous membrane and scratches. Rarely inhalation and organ transplantation. Now regarding the pathogenesis, say after the animal bite, the viruses that is present in the rabid animal bite will be infiltrated or <coughs> infiltrated at the site of bite and from, from there uh, at the site of bite the multiplication of these viruses takes place and through the <coughs> peripheral nerves it travels to the dorsal root ganglion and from there to the spinal cord and brain and then again it comes to the salivary glands and other secretory organs. See, this is very important because, see, whenever you give the local treatment or rabies immunoglobulins at the site of bite, <coughs> definitely you can prevent further progression of the disease. That's why it is important to know about the pathogenesis of rabies. And you also please note that virus is neurotropic and there is no viremia in rabies. As far as the disease onset is concerned, the incubation period, that is the time interval between exposure to bite of a rabid animal and onset of clinical manifestation is usually about three weeks to three months, but varies from four days to two years. See, the bites on head, neck, hands, and genital, genitals uh, have shorter incubation period. In case of children, being shorter in size, less defensive, and more vulnerable to severe exposure to have a short incubation period. So that's why, you see, we say any bite above the neck and below the wrist, it is usually considered as the severe bite or category 3 which requires not only the vaccine but also the rabies immunoglobulin that is ready-made antibodies because of the shorter incubation period. What about the clinical manifestations and outcome? The common symptoms of classical rabies in 80% of the cases includes hydrophobia, that is fear of drinking water, aerophobia, fear of breeze, and photophobia, fear of light. In less than, in less frequent type of paralytic rabies, the patient does not have these symptoms, that is the above symptoms, as we see in classical rabies, and it shows only the signs of paralysis, most commonly in the bitten limb and the condition usually progressive. The deaths in both forms of rabies, that is in classical rabies and paralytic rabies is mostly following cardiorespiratory failure. Now before treating, we have to assess the risk of exposure to the bite and this can be discussed under three headings as per WHO, that is category of exposure, description, and post-exposure prophylaxis, what we should give according to the category of bite. So in case of the in category one, which is the touching or feeding animals, licks on intact skin, contact of intact skin with secretions or excretions of rabid animal or person. See so here, this is regarded as the, it, or it is considered as not exposure and therefore no post-exposure prophylaxis is required in case of category one. See, we don't give anything, just wash the wound, uh, wash, the, the wash the site of, come uh, the uh, site of the, uh, site of uh, the, place which has come in contact with the saliva of the animal, that's all. 
in category 2 that is nothing but nibbling of uncovered skin minor scratches or abrasions without bleeding this is considered as category 2 which requires anti rabies vaccine and that should be injected as soon as possible then the category 3 it is nothing but single or multiple transdermal bites or scratches licks on broken skin contamination of mucous membrane with saliva from licks and exposure to the bats so this is category 3 here we are not only giving anti rabies vaccine we should also give the rabies immunoglobulin which is very very essential because it is considered a severe bite so it requires arv plus the rabies immunoglobulin and then now the new uh, the ready-made antibodies that is immunoglobulins have come into the market that is what we know what we call, know as the novel rabies monoclonal antibodies which is available in the trade name of rabies sheet now which is replacing the rabies immunoglobulin see this should be administered at distant sites as soon as possible and the immunoglobulin can be administered up to seven days after injection of the first dose of vaccine see usually what we will do in case of category 3 bite that is the severe bite where there is a multiple uh, <coughs> bites uh, with the deep uh, wound we give the vaccine simultaneously we have to inject the anti rabies uh, the rabies immunoglobulins or mono, uh, rabies monoclonal antibodies you know, this i will discuss in detail as we go further now what about laboratory diagnosis does do we require any laboratory diagnosis in case of a rabid animal bite no you see the laboratory diagnosis is not mandatory for management of any animal bite cases now see the post exposure prophylaxis in animal bite consists of three pronged approach all three carry equal importance and should be done simultaneously as per the category of exposure see this is very very important each step is important in prevention of rabies in any animal bite first one is local treatment of animal bite wounds second is active immunization with anti rabies vaccines and the third is passive immunization with the rabies monoclonal antibodies that is rap shield or the rabies immunoglobulins it can be either equine rabies immunoglobulin that is heterologous serum or human rabies immunoglobulin that is homologous serum prepared out of homologous serum now let us discuss one by one as far as the management of animal bite wounds are concerned now what about the local treatment of animal bite wounds see here the <coughs> wounds uh, wound toilet can be done by prompt and gentle thorough washing with soap or detergent and flushing the wounds with running water is very very important so if the soap and detergents are not immediately available just wash the wound with the running water so that you can eliminate most of the viruses <coughs> at the site of bite thereby you can reduce the chances of getting rabies to a great extent so the maximum benefit of wound washing is obtained when fresh wound is cleaned immediately so even after the lapse of some time if the patient comes don't forget to wash the wound thoroughly with running water and soap and water with soap and water and the running water under tap Considering the importance of this step, all health facilities or anti rabies clinics should have wound washing facilities. That's why, in, in all the anti rabies clinics, we will have the facilities for wound washing 
the particularly with the uh, running uh, running tap water along with the soap and water now what about the local treatment of uh, see the in continuation of this after washing the wound you should apply the antiseptics that is drying <laughs> see uh, once you wash the wound you dry it and then excuse me apply sir apply any of the yes apply any uh, so one the of slides the, are frozen uh, slides sir hello slides are frozen then okay okay i'll just ask them one minute thank you sir See, there is a power failure here. That's why you are not getting the slide show. Can you see it now? Hello. Is the slides are visible now? Yes, sir. The slides are seen, but they're not moving. What? Now is it is moving? Hello. Now is it is moving? Hello. Not Hello. Yet, sir. Not yet. What about now? See, can you see the slide? We can see the slide, sir. But ah, not which slide you are the... seeing now? Epidemiology of rabies. Epidemiology of rabies. Oh, the oh. first slide. First slide. Now I am already in twelfth slide. See now, can you see this? Local treatment of wound, animal bite wound. No, sir. You are not seeing. One minute. Yes. <laughs> now can you tell me which slide you are seeing now hello it's still the same one so same, same one no, you just find out uh, what about your internet is it is now getting or not? It's working, so. Huh? What about others? Others? So, a lot of people are facing the same issue. Uh, everyone's facing the same issue. Uh, no, you to ask your friends? Yes, sir. So no, even sir, we are facing the same issue. The slides are not moving, sir. Slides are not moving. Uh. Oh, one minute. Now, can you see the slides moving? Hello? Hello? No, sir. Oh. One minute. Oh. Indian 
Prometea. Now, can you see? Hello? Can you see the slides moving? No, no sir. sir. Still in epidemiology of rabies. Still it's the same first slide. Slide idea, Antala. Sir, your slideshow is not on. Slideshow is not on. Huh? No, I am sitting in the IT department only. Huh? Huh. Now it is stopped. Can you see that? Uh, now it is opened. Huh? Can you see it now? Huh? No, sir. So the PowerPoint can be seen. It's just that it's on the first slide itself. It's not moving. PowerPoint. No, it, here it is moving. It's not moving here, sir. PowerPoint uh, 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 it's not moving for the whole class, sir. Even on the chat box, a lot of people have put the same complaint. Just wait, we will find out the problem. From the first slide, you are not seeing. Eh? Ah, so now we can see epidemiology. Ah, now you can see. Eh? Okay. Yes, sir. What about now? It's the third slide right now, so we can see the third slide. Uh, now, second slide. Now, now which slide you are seeing? So it's still the third one. Still the third one. I have gone to the first slide now. What about now? It's still there, so I think there's a lag in the network. Uh -huh. This is the problem now. <laughs> Some technical problem here. I am sitting in the IT department only, but uh, we could not rectify it. That is the problem now. Now, what about uh, in the beginning, you could able to see the movement of slides or not? No, sir. Uh, because what happened now, uh, after some, after 10 slides, uh, uh, there was a power, power failure. I thought because of power failure, you could not see it. So from the beginning, you are not seeing uh, the movement of yes, slides. Sir. And now it's stuck on the third slide third slide on one minute I, I asked him to rectify this Now, which slide you are seeing? Hello? Third slide, sir. Third slide only. Yes, sir. One minute.
Now, can you see this? Which slide you are seeing now? Third slide, sir. Third slide only. Oh. Yes, sir. One minute. I am asking him to change the laptop. We'll see. Huh? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. No, I am asking him to change the laptop. We'll see whether okay, it can be rectified or not. Can you see the slides? So it's still the third slide. Huh? One minute. One minute. Now, can you see this? Huh?
ಹಾಂ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಟರ್ಮಿ ಹಲೋ ಹಲೋ ಸರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ ಸರ್ is it possible uh-huh. that you could exit and join back in it could resolve uh, the issue. that also we tried that also i tried now i am asking him to get another laptop he is uh, now opening another laptop oh, okay sir hmm? thank you thank you sir now this is uh, something uh, technical problem Thank you. 